Ooh, we are recording this podcast, and we are also, hopefully, going live. If you go back into the Remodelers on the Rise archives, you'll hear a lot of live shows that we used to do. And uh, we changed kind of the technology a little bit, but the new technology we use has this beautiful live feature. Um, a lot of you, uh, some of you may see it live uh, on YouTube. Some of you may see it live on LinkedIn. And then inside Remodelers Community, where a lot of you are, we will go ahead and share the uh, the YouTube link. And hopefully we can get some people to chime in uh, as we go. All right, all right, all right. So today's episode is a little bit of a, uh, um, I, I like to use the word smorgasbord because it's a good description of it, where it is going to hop from one topic to another. Uh, I did make a post in Remodelers Community. Uh, if you're not part of that, go to remodelerscommunity.com. And I got a couple questions, one from James and one from Chris Mosley. Uh, mostly actually. Uh, so I got those queued up. And what I have here is uh, just a little bit of variety of topics and uh, recording this right after the long Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully um, everybody was able to reflect on why we have Memorial Day and also hopefully disconnect a little bit from the business side of things. Maybe had a little bit of uh, family time. I found myself in my garage because we added to the high school graduation party prep list, paint the three-car garage, baby. It got done, started it late on Friday, hit it hard on Saturday, hit it hard on Monday, took kind of Sunday off, uh, and it is done. Checked off the list. We're ready for our oldest son who uh, is graduating from high school. His party is T-minus two weeks. And I'm feeling great about it. I'm feeling actually a little bit ahead of schedule, which probably is not a good thing because I might keep the foot off the gas. I need to keep the foot on the gas, get the deck stained and all this other stuff that's on the list. But hopefully you had a good uh, long weekend. As we as we settle back into it, uh, I feel like we're also kind of nearing-ish as June rolls around. We're nearing the halfway point of the year. And that's the first topic that I wanted to kind of get you guys thinking about. You started the year with some clarity, maybe some big plans, maybe some just plans, maybe they weren't big. When you think of your business through this first five, six months of the year, and if you were to pull out a sheet of paper, just slow down for a minute, and you were to write some things out, what would you put next to the what's working section of things? What things would you point to of saying, we have made progress on fill in the blank? This is working. And then if you were also to consider what's not working, and we still need to kind of get back and work on fixing fill in the blank. There is some good wisdom in running your business by just slowing down for, for 10 minutes and really stepping back, thinking about what some of your goals were for the year and checking in on the progress of those and just your progress overall. Stepping back from that, writing it down, maybe going on a little walk, step back and think about where things are at. Be honest with yourself. If you don't do this, we just keep going and going and going and going. And we may not be going the direction or we may not have made the course correction or the adjustment that we needed to make. So that's the first item is uh, you started the year with some clarity and big plans. How is it going? Slow down, take a minute and uh, and check into that. I am seeing if there's any live activity going on here. I'm always excited about the live. Ooh, there's a post that says, watch the Remodelers and the Rise show live right here. And then we click over on YouTube and there I am. So hopefully we'll get some chat boxes in there. The second thing that I wanted to bring up for you on this uh, variety of topics day is it says, how is your work-life balance? Some people kind of refer to it as their work-life integration, how I'm integrating work and, uh, and home life. But how is that going? And then simply, what is your plan for the next 30 days or so to improve it? Sometimes that can just be a simple thing, a simple adjustment. What needs to happen there? Is it your evening routine that needs a little fixing? Is it the time you're getting home 
from work. I was just working with one of my clients down in Florida on that, of her working to get home just even a half hour sooner. And she could see how that would set up their evening for a lot more success. Maybe it's your morning routine and you need to really work to get that into a, a direction that you need it to be. Maybe you have just been running and gunning too much. And as far as just scheduling a date night or scheduling a time for a hobby of yours or a friend of yours, just kind of think about that with the thought of what is your plan of one thing in the next 30 days to work on related to your work-life balance? Well, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right. And I'm watching this live to see if anybody's commenting there. And I'm also going over into the old Facebook group to see nothing so far. Um, I did get a comment uh, when I made a little post earlier that I was going live um, from a Mr. J um, oh, uh, Ohashi. James Ohashi. Hey, Kyle, how can I access your podcast? Uh, if you pull up any of your favorite podcast apps, maybe you're on um, Apple, Apple Podcasts, for instance, wherever you are, if you search Remodelers on the Rise, I should be popping up. Uh, I think it's a pretty, pretty little formal picture of me smiling just right. I got my little mug that says 5P on it. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Got a little podcast microphone out there. So if you if you search it uh, anywhere that you get your podcast, you'll find it. Uh, and then if you ever want to watch the video version, if you go on YouTube and search Remodelers on the Rise, you'll find it over there. You can also just go to remodelersontherise.com. Click on podcasts. That's another way of doing it. There's also a lot of other free resources and more information on our coaching on there. Wonderful. So there's uh, an answer to your question, James. Thank you for commenting with that. Another thing that I'd like to bring up. So the first one was uh, kind of your plan so far this year. Second one was work-life balance. The third one says, yeah, we're kind of doing just a check-in on a variety of things. How's the financial side of your business? How's the financial side of the business? Are there any expenses that you need to cut? So for some of you, you may be generating leads. You may be happy with the number of leads you're generating. Um, you may also find that you know, the conversion of those leads are not going as smoothly and as great as you are used to or as you need them to do to go. And just as a reminder, if things are shifting, if things are changing, perhaps you need to get ahead of the curve and maybe cut back on some expenses. I think a lot of times when you think back on uh, times that a business struggles, sometimes we hold on to all of our expenses, all of our overhead uh, a little bit too long. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Are there any expenses to cut? On the flip side, are there any areas that you are planning on investing in into your business and on the financial side of the business? When you look at your overall business budget, and yes, I would love for you to have an overall business budget. When you look at your overall business budget and you look down into that section of overhead expenses, well, when we look at that, it's either kind of you're spending the less than last year, the same as last year, or more this year. So for some of you, you may have made a plan at the start of the year on some areas that you're going to invest in in your business. And uh, I would encourage you maybe to dust that off, to look at that, to see if there's anything that you need to be cutting or anything that you need to be investing in. And overall, how's the financial side of the business? I talk to remodelers every week. And when I'm talking to some that are prospects and I ask a question like, hey, when was the last time you looked at your profit and loss statement? When was the last time you looked at your job cost reports? Uh, sometimes I get an answer that I'm not overly fond with, meaning it's been a while. It's been a while. So there we go. Um, cool. Now, Bailey, I'm seeing in, uh, I'm seeing a little chat. Okay. Doesn't look like I've seen any new chats. I'm just watching to see if there's any live comments. Very excited about the potential of that, but nothing so far. Bailey, if I'm missing anything, feel free to uh, feel free to let me know. Ooh, we got some likes on there, anyways. All right, cool. Um, next thing I wanted to mention, a uh, fourth thing. So the first one was overall plans, work-life balance. Number two, financial side. Number three. Uh, number four. It says, should you go into your estimating spreadsheet or the system you're using for that and increase things across the board? Ooh, sw swimmer, swimmer rats just said hi, Kyle. That person is live on YouTube. Hey, would love a question in there. Get some good little Q&A going during this live show. That would be amazing. 
Should you go into your estimating spreadsheet system and increase things across the board 3%? 3% increase on $1 million of revenue is $30,000. Small change? Could you still sell those projects at 3% more? I think so. And that could be a big result. Okay. So keep that in mind. A $50,000 project would turn into a $53,000 project, right? A $100,000 project would turn into a $103,000 project. Did I do the math on that, right? I think so. Your prospect will not blink at that. That extra revenue will help you hit your financial goals. Sometimes that's all you need to hear. Hey, go in there and charge more. Uh, another thing to consider when you go into your estimating spreadsheet or your system or your template, what are you plugging in there for your full employee labor burden? Full employee labor burden. That's Lori Hansen that says, looks like I'm logged in as my daughter. Well, that happens. These kids, they get our devices and they get our computers. You just never know what they're going to pull up. Um, but Lori, if you have a question, I would love it. And hopefully your cruise last week was lovely, Lori. Lori was on a, a networking. She was networking with architects and strategic partners, very businessy, but it may have been in the form of a cruise. Okay. But go into your estimate and look at what you have for your full employee labor burden. If you haven't updated that in a while, chances are you need to reach out if you need a link to the employee labor burden spreadsheet, a little lesson related to that. I'd be happy to send that to you. But take a look at that because that number that you're plugging into there before you add your markup and margin is very important. I was talking to her mother last week and he was about $8 low on that. Meaning, let's say he had four an hour for his full employee labor burden cost, his hourly wage he pays them, plus the taxes, plus vacation time, plus, plus, plus. There's a lot of different things to add in there. And when he actually updated it for his team across the board, it needed to be up in that 48 range. And he immediately went in and did that. So that's the fourth, fourth thing is related to kind of your estimating spreadsheets. You need to increase things across the board and also maybe take a look at your employee labor burden. Hot dog, we're just cruising right along here, folks. Cruising right along. Um, I did get a question uh, earlier from Chris Mosley. He said, curious on how everyone is doing, Mark. Slower this year in our area. He's out in the Utah area. Slower this year in our area. Lots of leads, not so many pulling the trigger. And I think if we did take a poll uh, of anybody listening to this live or anybody listening to the recording, I think a lot of folks would echo that uh, statement that Chris made. It's a little slower this year. Yeah, leads are still kind of coming in, but as far as the quality of those leads and as far as the conversion of those leads into paying projects, this is something that I'm hearing from a lot of remodelers that I'm talking to. So Chris, as far as um, kind of the first part of how everyone is doing, I would say your description is the description for a lot of folks. And then the next thing we have to think about is, okay, so what do we do if that is uh, the fact of the matter? And what that turns into is marketing and sales, a bigger focus on marketing and sales. And frankly, for the last number of years, marketing has been a little lower on our priority list than um, it probably needs to be now. So when we think of marketing, kind of think through what is it that I have been doing related to marketing? How is that working? What is my overall marketing budget and dollars that I have to invest? The marketing dollars that I am investing, are they working well? Maybe you're doing some paid advertising on Google. Maybe you're doing some search engine optimization. Maybe you're advertising in a local publication. Maybe you are investing in a new website. Maybe you are really focused in on strategic partners, people who share the same ideal client as you do, interior designers, home designers, architects, high-end realtors, high-end landscapers. And maybe you need to put more focus on that. So kind of evaluate what you're currently doing, the budget you have for that, how things are working, and then how can you double down on that? How can we be more consistent in our marketing efforts? I was just talking to our modeler in Pennsylvania this morning on this very thing. And we were talking about, you know, when we are haphazard with our marketing, it's kind of similar to when we're haphazard uh, with our overall health, or in particular, I just mentioned the working out aspect. If we work out um, Monday this week, and then Thursday the following week, and then we got really busy and like two and a half weeks out, we did another workout. 
it's better than nothing, but we kind of know what the results of that sporadic uh, consistency is going to be. And I would encourage remodelers listening to this that there needs to be a more consistent effort towards marketing uh, work and marketing efforts, frankly. If we can be doing something consistently week in and week out, whether it is creating content, whether it is the networking with strategic partners, whether it is figuring out the search engine optimization side of things, whether it is requesting Google reviews week in and week out, if we do that consistently, we're going to start to generate more leads. And when conversion of our leads are down, we need to increase the quantity and, and hopefully quality of our leads. Yes, more people might be pull, not pulling the trigger, but if we have more people in the hopper and in the pipeline, we could still and should be able to still hit some of our revenue and gross profit and net profit goals. And I said marketing and sales, so that's a marketing talk. And then the sales uh, process front is when we are struggling to convert leads into paying projects, some of what we are experiencing is the sticker shock of pricing. Some of what we are experiencing is people just not wanting to sign on the dotted line and maybe put off, excuse me, I felt that coming for a while. Oh, that sneeze, unless Bailey is gonna edit it out, but I say leave it in there unless it was really loud. So it's also kind of a sales process challenge of how do we really ramp up our, this is how we work. The, the process that we're taking people through, are we sending a nice little handwritten thank you card out? after we meet with them for the first time in person? Are we sending that email out between the initial phone call and the in-person meeting? When was the last time we kind of dusted off and updated um, what we're presenting to them? What we're, what we're, hand, what we're um, leaving behind with them um, at the in-person in meeting? I just spent some time with one of my clients here in Michigan. Uh, it was actually on Friday. It was my last meeting before the long weekend. Uh, and we looked at their current presentation of their project development agreement. And so we really hacked it. Hey, we've been doing it this way. Are clients responding to this slide? No, I don't even like that slide anymore. It feels redundant. Cool. Delete it. Hey, what is the point of this being? We're trying to get them to sign the design and development agreement. We need to move some of that meat up here where they're going to be excited about and see examples of the design, see examples of our selection sheets, see examples of the scope of work. So really take a look at your overall sales process and identify an area or two that you could be enhancing. Wonderful. Let me check and see if we've got uh, any comments here. Uh, Michael Angel dittoed Chris Mosley's question, which just we just uh, kind of went through of Michael seeing lots of leads, but not as many pulling the trigger. You know, the other thing that comes to mind for this uh, from a coaching standpoint is if we are seeing this over the course of not just a month, but three months and four months and six months and seven months, and our overall backlog of work has been going down a little bit, we may need to consider what that means overall for our business. If our revenue is going to be down a bit this year compared to last year, and therefore our gross profit may be down a bit um, compared to last year, it may be time to proactively make some cuts to our overhead expenses. I know that's tough to, I know that's tough to hear, but maybe it is time that we don't need that second project manager, for example. Maybe it is time that we look at and say, why in the world are we paying for that storage unit for $170 a month? Do we really need that? Cut it. Look just at your overall overhead expenses and maybe there's some bigger or maybe there's even smaller things that you need to be cutting. I think a lot of us are very kind of long-term optimistic of going, well, yes, things have been slow for going on four or five months. Yes, the backlog is tight. Yes, the cash flow is a little tighter than it was, but we're just going to kind of keep going exactly the way we've been going with the exact amount of overhead and exact amount of investment everywhere. And sometimes it may be prudent and wise to a little more proactively trim back your overhead and your business a little bit to set yourself up for success. So it's another thing I just wanted to kind of put in people's in people's minds related to that. All right, rock and roll and rock and roll. Um, so thank you for dittoing that. All right, cool. Lori, hit me with a question over there in the uh, in the chat box on YouTube, if you would. Wonderful. So we've covered a variety so far. Let me hit you with a few other uh, items. 
Um, this might be the sixth or maybe the seventh one because I've incorporated some questions. The sixth one says, encouragement and accountability. Are you lacking in either of these areas? Should you consider joining a mastermind group of your peers or hiring a business coach to help you or even just reaching out to somebody you know in the industry? Maybe you just know them through your Home Builder Association, your NARI group. Maybe it's somebody that's not even in remodeling but is a good friend or colleague of yours. Uh, maybe they're a business owner of some sort. There is great encouragement that comes from um, just sharing some of the burden and some of what's on your mind, thinking through it, whether it be with a professional coach like myself, whether it be in a peer group, which also Remodelers on the Rise offers those, and uh, and just overall kind of encouragement and motivation from that. There's also some accountability there. A lot of you know what you need to be doing and you ain't doing it. It's not so much, I need help figuring out what I need to do, uh, or you need to really ramp up the discipline and some accountability on it. Doing some of these things that you know you need to do that you continue to put off. Identifying that frog, the most important thing for you to do that you're most likely to put off and eating that first thing in the morning. So I share that from a kind of maybe, you know, seek out a little bit of encouragement, a little bit of accountability. Um, keep that in mind. Cool. I and mean, Lori just hit, Lori just hit us with a question. One thing she said, we need to update our website. And I keep putting it off because it feels daunting. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I think there may be a little bit to that of just kind of taking one page of the website and maybe doing your edits and the wording or the photos and just kind of tackle that one at a time. You know, if you say, hey, between now and uh, June 7th, we're going to focus in on the art process page of our website. Awesome. If you happen to get it done before then, even better. And then you can move on to the, you know what, we're going to go out to the contact form of our website. So I remember Kyle talking about um, wanting people to <clears throat> upload photos, give people the option to upload photos or videos there, you know, make sure the contact form has all the fields that we want. So just kind of take that one at a time. Um, and then you said, I love the overview that you did of Tony Woodall's Kate. C-A-K-E. -E. Tell us about that. I may tell you about that in a minute, actually. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Let me let me hit a couple other, and for asking questions, thank you. Um, let me hit you with a couple other uh, items. We're going to call this number seven. Um, look at your bookshelf. I've got bookshelves back here. Probably got about 45 books here. I've got more at home. And the thought here is look at your bookshelf. Grab a book that you've been meaning to read or even better that has impacted you in the past can you maybe read 10 pages tonight instead of scrolling instead of watching the dallas mavericks sweep the uh the timberwolves tonight it's game four of the western conference finals uh, maybe you just read 10 15 pages so maybe take a look around find a book dust it off dust it off put it in your uh put it in your little satchel or your bag or your purse or your man purse and take that home with you. Cool. Um, and then number uh, number eight, I think we might be at. Uh, it says, is there a hard decision that you've been putting off? Just gonna let that sit for a minute. Is there a hard decision you've been putting off? Maybe it's an employee or trade partner you need to have a heart to heart with or even that you need to let go of. Set a next step and a deadline for when you will have the conversation or when you're gonna part ways with them. I think a lot of times we can put off hard decisions. It might also go back to what I mentioned related to, maybe there's some hard decisions related to your overhead expenses. And you may need to be a little bit more aggressive with that for the security and the profitability and the health of your business. So kind of keep that in mind. Maybe there is one, two, maybe three people that are listening to this recording, that when I said, is there a hard decision you've been putting off, something immediately came to mind, and maybe a couple of you um, might kind of set a deadline and a clear next step to tackle that. Wonderful, wonderful. So we talked about just your overall business plans for the year. We talked about some work-life balance encouragement, talked about the financial side of the business, talked about going into your estimating, and maybe it's time to change things a little bit in there. Talked about employee labor burden, talked about your overall markup or margin. I talked a little bit about uh, the marketing side and the sales side when we answer Chris's question. 
Uh, talks a little bit encouragement, accountability, hard decisions you're putting off. Talked about the bookshelf. So all of that is amazing. The ninth thing on here, it says, should you talk to Kyle about your business and how he can help? Ooh, well, that's just like a straight up ask there. I've had several people sign up for the Remodelers VIP club in the last uh, week or two. It is a wonderful group. We are focused more on financials for the second quarter. Uh, and we're going to be heading into the marketing side of things in Q3. Great time to join for that. Um, I have a couple of peer groups that have a few openings that uh, that we're filling here shortly. Also do some one-on-one -on -one coaching. We also had like three, maybe four people sign up for Modeler's Autopilot last week. A really nice done-for-you email newsletter and social media post uh, program. So feel free to go to remodelersontherise.com or just reach out to uh, Kyle at remodelersontherise.com or give us, a, give us a call and we can learn about your business and talk to you about that. And then Lori said, hey, pull up that cake thing that cake thing. And I'm going to just pull up on my screen here and I will leave us uh, with that. So we did a remodeler, uh, remodel your leadership conference at the start of May uh, in beautiful Detroit, Michigan. And uh, one of my guest speakers, uh, the talented and handsome Tony Woodall did a, uh, a lot of the presentations on day number one of that. And one of the acronyms he had, and this was related to um, creating individual bonds, creating individual bonds with your employees, um, with your trade partners, et cetera. Um, he uses an acronym called CAKE, C-A-K-E. And I'm looking for the magic slide. There it is. So C stands for curiosity. A stands for appreciation. K stands for kindness. And E stands for eye contact. And in the interest of keeping this to about a half hour today, I'm just going to share with you um, three of the skills he was teaching us on related to the first one, which is curiosity. Curiosity. If I'm going to make better individual bonds with my team members, with my employees, with my trade partners, being curious is one of the ways that we communicate better, that we're a better listener, that we uh, engage with them and frankly create better bond with them. Uh, is called curiosity. So he basically taught us nine skills and then said, hey, now that you kind of know these skills, now you have to create them into habits. You need to turn them into habits. So that's kind of the, the thing we did on day two of the conference. So number one skill is curiosity. Listen all the way through until the person is done talking. Well, I'm not very good at that. But I already know what I want to say. And I already have a response for it. Uh, great communication and great leadership. Listen all the way through until the person is done talking. Respectful. People appreciate uh, being heard. And sometimes you end up hearing something because you're a lot more present with it. Uh, and you can respond better at that point. The second uh, item under curiosity, the second skill, ask at least two follow-up questions. Ask at least two follow-up questions. When somebody comes to you with a situation, ask at least two follow-up questions. So if I'm, if I'm hearing you right, you've already tried to do um, the following. Is that correct? Tell me more about that. So have you, have you also considered how this is going to affect the schedule for next week? Tell me kind of your thoughts on that. Instead of us just giving the answer, to get them to engage in it, that is just flat out good leadership. When we have a team member, in, for example, if I have a team member that's not following process very well, that doesn't seem to be growing in their ability to make decisions and to lead, uh, a lot of times I find an owner or a, or a direct report that is always just giving them the answer very quickly, not getting them to kind of engage, to think through it. So be curious. Listen all the way through until the person is done talking. And secondly, ask at least two follow-up questions. And then the third um, skill that he was working on teaching us under Curious is summarize back what you understood. So if I'm hearing you right, you've tried to call them, kind of ran, ran out of um, options there, and then you, you haven't communicated with the client yet, and you're trying to figure out what the next right thing is to do here. Is that right? Yes, exactly. That is good communication. That is good leadership. So that was the C of the cake. Lori Hansen got the full C-A-K-E because they're a one-on-one -on -one client with me. So they get the full. You guys just got the C. 
and everybody that attended the leadership event also got the rest of them. So I would read through the rest of them, but I'm trying to keep this at uh, this time frame, and it's time to wrap up. So hopefully each of you heard something in there that was a good reminder or a good next step for you to take. Feel free, feel free to uh, to give a little five star review or four star or whatever they offer on your little podcast app, so more remodelers can see this, and I really appreciate that. And uh, feel free to reach out if you're stuck on something. Um, there's a lot of uh, your peers that have gone through similar things. I've worked with hundreds of remodelers at this point. You might be able to point you in the right direction, give you an answer to your question, or figure out how to uh, to help you a little bit more. Be well, my friends. Catch you later.